session seven is we're going through First Thessalonians looking at uh, how uh, we make disciples as D group leaders in the context of our D group. Uh, we're looking at uh, First Thessalonians 2, 9 through 12 today, and it says this. It says, For you remember, brothers, our labor and toil. Uh, we worked night and day that we may, might not be a burden to any of you, but we proclaim to you the gospel of God. That you are witnesses, and God also, how holy and righteous and blameless was our conduct towards you believers. For you know how, like a father with his children, we exhorted each one of you and encouraged you and charged you to walk in a manner worthy of God, who calls you into his own kingdom and glory. And in this text, we see that disciple-making uh, is hard in two ways. Uh, one, it is a, a, a working toil night and day uh, because Paul, 2,000 years ago, was doing exactly what you guys are doing. In verse 9, he's talking about how he's holding down a full-time job to meet his physical needs, while in his off time, he's, he's investing time and energy uh, and emotion uh, into th these believers in Thessalonica as he's holding up the gospel to them. Uh, if it feels like it's hard to be a D-group leader, well, that means you're probably doing it right. Um, but that's the call uh, that, that Paul says we have in our life, that God himself in verse 10 sees as holy and righteous and blameless as we're loving these people sacrificially um, through difficulty, doing this really hard work of making disciples. That's the first way that's hard. It's labor. Uh, but, but the other way that it's hard um, is in what it is that we are called to do in making disciples. Uh, because what Paul has been talking about in chapter 2 is that making disciples is like parenthood. In verse 7, he said he, he was like a nursing mother among uh, those believers there in, in Thessalonica. In his unconditional love and acceptance and patience and gentleness towards them, in the slowness of their discipleship, he was like a nursing mom. Uh, but here in this text, then, he said he's also like a dad. Uh, that that unconditional love and acceptance comes also with authority. That he's been, as he's been gentle, as he's been patient with this church, he also spoke with authority into their lives. And not just in general, but he, he says here in uh, uh, verse 12 how he exhorted each one of you. That Paul didn't just generally preach the gospel. He, he didn't just teach classes to inform this church. He had specific desires for the specific believers there uh, at that church in Thessalonica. And that's the way we should be in our D groups. Having specific desires for specific people in our group, how we can exhort, uh, encourage, and call them each into a greater uh, obedience, dependence, and love for Jesus Christ as their king. That's what he's talking about in living a life worthy of God, who has called them into his kingdom and his glory. His own kingdom means he's called you as the king to be under his authority. And as you come under Jesus' authority, you come to experience how great and glorious and good that king is. Well, that's what we're doing in the lives of these people in our D group. Speaking with authority into specific areas of their life, how their lives can come under greater the greater authority of Jesus Christ. And that's a scary deal. Because we live in a culture where I'm not supposed to do that. I'm not supposed to call anybody uh, to come under any kind of authority, um, let alone speaking about ultimate authority of sin and repentance and faith. Uh, but there's two things we need to remember as we speak specifically uh, into the lives of specific people in our D group. One, we're not speaking under on, on our own authority. We're under that same authority we're calling these people to but we're calling them to come under the authority of Jesus Christ himself. And two, it's not our job to convince them of Jesus' authority. Uh, that's what he spent the whole, sent, has sent the Holy Spirit to do. Uh, Paul, in this whole letter, is actually celebrating the work of God, that God's word comes through him with power. It's the power of the Holy Spirit to bring conviction into the lives of these Thessalonican believers and to bring life through that belief. And that's what we need to expect and hope for in the lives of our people of our, in our D group. As we're speaking specifically as fathers with authority in the specific areas of our people's lives. That's what we're called to do. Both be a mom uh, in our unconditional love for people and be a dad by speaking with authority into the lives of our people.